locations around the world during this crisis, people are wearing personal protective equipment, or PPE, to protect themselves. This includes things like face masks to stop virus particles from entering our respiratory system. But because of the sudden demand that this crisis has caused, supplies of PPE is low, and some people, like healthcare workers, whose lives depend on having this equipment, are risking their lives without adequate safety equipment. And that's where researchers at the Queensland University of Technology have come in with a new manufacturing technique for face masks. Over the last four or five years, we've been looking at a range of filter material. We've been looking at diesel engine exhaust and the, and the filter for diesel engine exhaust. Um, but it became obvious uh, over time that um, maybe using a cellulosic material for that, so cellulosis from plant-based material, uh, and it became obvious that perhaps we should be looking at a thinner material that might be more suitable for um, PPE. Cellulosic material refers to cellulose fibres which can be obtained from the bark, wood or leaves of plants or other plant-based material. So why would using plant-based material be beneficial for creating face masks? Plants are everywhere um, and uh, sugarcane is, is a fantastic feedstock so we're able to use the sugarcane waste uh, which is the gas uh, in order to uh, make the base material for these masks. The gas is the dry, pulpy, fibrous residue that is the leftover waste product after sugarcane plants are crushed to extract their juice. It is primarily being used as a biofuel source for sugar mills. Sugarcane has a fantastic ability to uh, be able to produce a uh, very breathable material. So this material that we have developed is far more breathable than uh, many other filtration materials which are um, used uh, commercially uh, from the commercial mask that we tested at least. So what makes these masks different from current masks that are being manufactured? The mask that could be produced will be much more breathable uh, and um, for a given efficiency of removing viruses. So that means that you'll have more uh, user comfort. Um, but also the other thing is that a lot of the materials are coming in from overseas at the moment and as we know there's a lot of problems bringing in uh, these, these sorts of materials. So we can use this using Australian based uh, plant feedstocks and produce this entirely uh, within Australia. By being a lot thinner it makes uh, with the same filtration efficiency as some commercial uh, filter materials uh, it means that it's just a lot more breathable and more comfortable to wear. Alternatively we can have it at just as breathable as commercial masks but in even further increase the uh, filtration efficiency. One of the barriers to people using face masks is the discomfort from the breathing because it's quite hard to breathe through. So if we can um, produce a mask which is more breathable then perhaps more people will be willing to wear face masks out in the public um, just because it's, it's that much easier to wear. So what does the design process for technology like this look like? So originally we were looking at um, air pollution masks that you might see more commonly worn in China for example. We, we did have some initial investigations discussion in the medical area but um, I think that's really come into focus now with the uh, current uh, crisis that we're facing. I think it's going to take a while for Australia to produce enough uh, face masks of its own accord. Um, so uh, this, this is one avenue in which, uh, which we can produce um, face masks uh, within Australia for a broad range of applications including for air pollution uh, applications as well as for viruses.